Welcome back. Time for our GMC Sierra tweet of the night comes from the Altoona curve. Saturday's game is completely sold out. Reminder gates will open early at 430 PM. First pitch is at 6 PM. Lawn chairs are not permitted. And if you weren't paying attention, here's why that game is sold out because Paul Skeens, number one overall pick in the MLB amateur draft. Pirates pretty much number one prospect now. He will make his double A debut Saturday night in Altoona. It's going to be Paul Skeens night basically in Central PA. Chris, your thoughts so far with how Ben Charrington and his front office have handled Paul Skeens. I'm glad that he's pitched so far four innings if you count the one in the Florida Complex League, which I do, which may or may not have something to do with a uh, bucko auction house topic on the PM team where I bought a certain number of innings that Skeens would pitch in the organization this year, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, please pitch at least 13, Paul. Um, <laughs> I do like that they're handling him this way. I mean, they had Garrett Cole as a previous 1-1 guy who didn't pitch a single uh, official inning or throw a single official pitch for the team until the year after he was drafted. I like that they got Skeens in. I like that they ramped him back up. I like that they're letting him get a taste of, in this case, kind of legitimate minor league baseball. This guy is supposed to be as fast track, clean cut, can't screw it up as you can get, treat them that way. And I, what I think is going to be a proof in the pudding situation, Josh, is not how this finishes out this year, which I think is going to be a couple more starts in double A, and then that's going to be it. He throws maybe 10, 12 more innings at most. What I think is going to be the, the real litmus test is how do the Pirates handle him next year? How early do they bring him up? How aggressive are they? How much do they throw caution to the wind, if at all, with Super 2 or anything else? with a guy that on a competitive team could be the ace as soon as next, I don't know, May, if you want to get that, that aggressive with it? At this rate, it doesn't sound too far-fetched if you're putting it that way, but I, I do agree with you in the fact that, you know, I'm glad to see that they're doing this with him and that they're bringing him along the way they have. You know, he got that rookie league start, did well there. They got him the single-A start. He did well there. And you, you've heard the saying as much as I have about double-A, the guys there have facial hair and sliders. So it's an entirely different dynamic as far as minor league ball goes. And, yeah, I'm curious to see how he finishes out this season. And I'm curious to see how this team handles this guy, not only with what he does this year, how he handles spring training, how he handles, you know, those those big league bats that he might face next year. Because usually if you're the first round pick the next year, you get invited to spring training, whether you make the team or not. So that'll be something else I'm keeping an eye on, too. We want to hear from you. 412-575-2600 on the Board of some Borders hotline. We got JB and Shadyside. JB, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, how are you guys? Good. How are you, JB? Good, thanks. All right, so the one thing about the Steelers that really scares me, and I think they actually are going to be really good. I think they're going to make the playoffs, but I do think that Deontay Johnson is going to cost them the playoffs. They're going to lose because he can't make key catches down the stretch. And I know they're going to keep throwing to him because he's their number one or whatever, but I just don't trust JB, him. that is an incredibly – JB, that is an incredibly specific concern to have Very in specific. late August. I actually, I actually applaud you for having a concern that specific because if it comes down to whether or not Deontay Johnson can make catches in a playoff game, I will have, by all accounts and measures, considered this a very successful Steelers season. Um, but he, I'll tell you what, you want, a, you want like something other than what's been talked about as a way that the Steelers offense could really hum this year? It's that you get very few if any drops from Johnson and very few instances of him doing what I call the Jeffy's dotted line from family circus uh, <laughs> post catch kind of maneuver where doot, 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 up a tree through the swing oh, set man. and eventually back towards upfield. You've had some references man that might be my favorite that family circus man. Oh you show both of our ages. I was a Calvin and Hobbes kid. I mean if I'm being honest here I was all Calvin and Hobbes all the time but there's no there's no good analog for Jeffy's dotted line in that comic strip. Calvin and Hobbes came a very close second to the far side for me. I was always a far side guy. It, I'm, I'm a dry humor guy, but that's a long story. Ray and Whitehall, you're on the nightly sports call. Yeah, um, I wanted to know what you guys think about Stanford and Cal. Do you think it'll happen with the ACC, and do you think uh, that will you know, save the conference? 
I was hoping we'd get to this. I appreciate this call. Chris, I wanted to talk about this because there's reports surfacing again that, you know, the first discussions of Cal and Stanford not happening. Now it appears it might be a thing again. And add SMU into the mix, Chris. Where do you stand on this with the ACC? Is this good for the ACC? Let's start there. If you can add teams anymore in college football and poach another dying conference's last few uh, marketable schools, yes, it's a good thing. It's a bad thing for Pitt Volleyball, women's volleyball, because mm. Stanford's always got a squad there. It's a bad thing for the soccer programs because Stanford's got a squad there. It's a good thing academically to whatever extent that actually matters in college athletics. Hint, hint, not very much. Uh, it's also a good thing to bring in SMU because you're bringing in the Dallas media market. I heard the term from, I think it was Richard Johnson from Sports Illustrated, one of the split zone duo guys. He used the term stolen valor independence, and I can't get it out of my brain. It's too good. It's too good. I hear it, and it makes me giggle like you do a lot. It, it, it has that noise in my brain. That's how I feel when I hear that. We got to take another break. I got another question for Chris when we come back and we wrap up. Stick around.